if the Bulls can reclaim 274 on the Qs, right? If we can get a 274 on the Qs, then this whole level here, I think, will be imminent. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody is staying safe. Hope everybody is being loved and again, stay healthy and life kind of works out uh, with a positive attitude. So let, let's talk about the market. So um, the indexes this week, uh, most indexes, the Dow, the S&P, uh, finished off the week, four consecutive weeks now of downward side bias. Uh, the NASDAQ, the Qs, um, they closed up 1%. I, I, I think a lot of people, based on Friday's action, got very, very excited. And, you know, again, I think they have a right to be. The, the track record for the market for the last two and a half years was every single time the market looked like it was about to collapse, uh, bulls found their ground, they kept it moving, they reclaimed major levels and moved forward. So I, I get the idea that uh, people are very, very excited, and you hear, you hear a lot of people turn around, well, that was the bottom. Again, we don't know. We, we can only speculate that the bottom is always obvious after the fact. And we've been seeing nonstop buying for two and a half years. Uh, we've been seeing bears pulling out their hair. So any single time there's any type of sell-off in the market that doesn't last, you know, last more than uh, three days, all of a sudden we're going back to the lows. Uh, again, for, for me, um, I stopped figuring this out long time ago. I, I just stopped doing so. Um, ever since the March lows, I've been really trying to pick it day by day. Again, have a very concrete opinion on the bias. Uh, all week this week, I was sell bias, and obviously the action for the most part of the week was dominated on the sell side at one point of the day or another. Uh, but again, I, like I've said in every single video, um, you know, it's very, very quick, uh, very, very easy to, to get caught in a bias, paint yourself in a corner, and really get run over. And you know the dynamics of the market change very, very quickly. Um, for, for a couple of months now, we've been seeing really good, aggressive decline levels in a lot of COVID cases, especially in, in, in the big cities. Uh, New York, right? Uh, New York was, was doing you know, four to 5,000 people, new cases as of like two, three months ago. Uh, we got down to like, well, you know, three, 400 a day. This past week, we spiked about to about 1,000. Uh, New Jersey, where I live, we were doing four to 5,000 new cases a day for a very, very long time. Uh, as of last week, they did spike, uh, but the, the, the average day was like three to 400. So I, I think the market also got very comfortable with the idea that, okay, we know that there is going to be a second wave. Again, you can make an argument this is still the same wave, but at least we're getting acclimated to living in this whole COVID world. Uh, and what we saw in the last week or so, we had spikes in major cities. We saw spikes uh, in Europe. And you know, that started you know, giving kind of a, the, the, the concern that, you know what, maybe now it's time to kind of buckle down. Let's not get caught uh, off guard this time. Let's make precautions maybe uh, start getting a little safer before it comes really, really aggressively. Um, and that's the way we kind of want to do it. And the market kind of got nervous this week and you started seeing the little bit of a sell-off. And then come Friday, we had this really, really big rally. What, what I liked about the rally on Friday, um, the bulls had every chance to roll over. And if you guys remember Thursday's video, we rallied very strong. We were up like 300 points or so. Uh, we, re we got rejected off the five-day moving average and completely reversed. So the Bulls had the opportunity to kind of lay down and die. It was Friday. Um, a lot of people, and, and again, I want to send a shout out to uh, all our Jewish friends that are uh, observing Yom Kippur. It starts tonight at sundown uh, and it goes all the way till tomorrow night. Uh, have an easy fast, first and foremost. Um, I myself, I'm a bad guy. Um, I've lost my Jewish card a long time ago. I got married in a Roman Catholic church uh, 20 years ago, so bad guy. Um, but anyway, I think we're going to see, come tomorrow, you're going to see 
a lot less a lot less, less volume, okay, uh, just because so many people are going to be off tomorrow. Uh, but what I like what the bulls did was not only reclaim the five-day moving average, it reclaimed uh, the 10-day as well. Now, again, when I looked at charts, uh, I started charting, you know, very lightly. Uh, my, my routine is after the close on Fridays, as I'm, you know, drinking my coffee, whatever the case may be, I'm still in in, in work mode. Um, so I started going lightly through charts, and I, I, I joked around. And I tweeted this out. I go, I, I've made my, you know, I've made my um, uh, watch list for Monday. I, I narrowed it down to like 450 stocks. And I was joking around, but that's kind of where we were. Um, the fact that we, we did reclaim major levels was kind of a big deal. But again, and I want to, to re, re, really reiterate this very, very aggressively so everybody understands. We're not out of the woods, guys. Okay, I'm super, again, if you're charting this weekend, and you should, you're going to see ridiculous amounts of setups from beta to non-beta, like so many. Okay, but the problem is, again, macro levels, again, need to be really taken down. And again, we did a great job. Reclaim the five, reclaim the 10. Everybody see this whole level here, right? If the bulls can reclaim 274 on the Qs, right? If we can get a 274 on the Qs, then this whole level here, I think will be imminent. So I think Monday's session is going to be rather important. The problem is again, you're going to see a lighter volume session just because so many people are going to be uh, observing um, Yom Kippur. So it's very, very important not to, to get uh, too kind of biased uh, into bull or bear debate come Monday night. I think we'll get a true sense of the market come Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, we're either, again, I believe we're either going to get rejected off this level here uh, and roll back down, or again, we have to, you know, if the bulls want to rally, they have to at least at the minimum, reclaim 274 on the close, on the cues. And if we can reclaim 278 throughout the week, then yes, we have a legitimate shot. You can make a strong bull case that we're gonna go back to uh, all time highs. Uh, if you look at the S&P, right, uh, look at the SPX. Again, we know the big number, right? The big number here uh, to break this whole downward cycle uh, is going to be this 34, 25, 34, 30 area. We get that, right? That's, it, got, it got rejected there four times, but again, at least it was nice to see that the bulls at least reclaimed the five-day moving average, and now we're going to run into a next kind of line in the sand, do or die scenario, somewhere around this 33 and a quarter area. So again, are we out of the woods? Absolutely not. You can see here, we're still in a dead downtrend. And until we start reclaiming uh, big macro levels, again, assume we are. So I, I'm still uh, in the camp that I believe that the upside, unless there's some really, really big levels, uh, the upside needs to be kind of traded with, um, you know, kid gloves. You got to treat this uh, very gently. I, I think there's better value to the upside on cash flow. And again, the word cash flow could be uh, very subjective. If you're trading a $30 stock, maybe you know cash flow is 50 cents. If you're trading a beta, you know maybe the cash flow is $2, $3, right? But I don't think unless we start uh, really confirming these levels, you're, you're not going to get a 100-point move in, in, in Amazon. Again, we already had that 100-point move in Amazon just because, for example, uh, Amazon reclaimed certain levels, right? Reclaimed these levels here and started moving back. But again, you can see how it's mirror imaging the S&P 500, uh, the Qs. So it's very, very important, again, to understand that, again, at any time they could gap up, get stuffed, and roll over. So again, just understand your levels. We, we always talk about uh, not bull, not bear, just understand levels. Levels are going to be your guide. You don't need to ask anybody uh, anybody's opinion, whether they like it or they don't like it. Uh, if you have eyeballs and you have common sense and you can read a chart, it's most very basic thing that your eyeballs probably won't let you down. So if you see uh, the market get rejected, for example, on Amazon at 31.88, you know that's supply, right? If it starts rolling over, you know that's a bad sign. If it closes over 31.90, you know it's very, very bullish. So again, you don't need uh, to ask 28 people what they think about Amazon, okay? It's all about uh, reclaiming levels or getting rejected levels. So it's gonna be very, very uh, important. Um, here's kind of what, what I liked about uh, this week. Um, I had a really crappy trade on Tesla on Monday. That was the whole um, that was the whole kind of day before the battery day, and then throughout the week I, I did okay, um, especially especially towards the end of the week. Some really really good value, and I, I think 
the market has taught us that, again, number one, if you're a brand new trader, uh, you can't fall in love with these stocks. Again, I don't think anybody on the planet loves Tesla more than me, but I don't love it to the point of I'm going to stand and defend uh, their fundamentals. When it goes up, it's great. When it goes down, it's great. Okay, so it's very, very important to understand that. The one thing that I didn't like uh, about this week, I didn't like the liquidity. Uh, Monday through Wednesday, I didn't like the liquidity. Um, I thought, <clears throat> especially on the beta side, I thought a lot of names were really spready. Okay, uh, at one point I was watching Amazon; it was trading like five dollars spread. Uh, Netflix now has been has been really like like they have to fix Netflix. Something is wrong with Netflix. For the last year, Netflix has been trading. You know, it's a good trader, right? You can still get from point A, point a to point B. But Netflix has been trading like at a dollar spread at some point, 100 share lots on all sides. So the liquidity this week wasn't great. Obviously, Tesla's phenomenal liquidity, Apple's phenomenal liquidity, Facebook as well. But a lot of names were very, very light. So I'd like to see the liquidity get better. And maybe again, it's not, you know, it's not there just because we're in this downward channel right now. And again, when you have a downward move in the markets, you're going to have less participants because again, the majority of the public is not a trader, right? They're investors. So if you're an investor and you're cautious and you're watching the market go down for four consecutive weeks, you're going to be less active than the active trader on every single basis. So I get that part. So hopefully if we can start reclaiming some bigger macro levels, you're going to have natural liquidity uh, coming back into the markets. And I think if we can close, especially on the queues, uh, if we can close on Monday, okay, above the 274 level, you can see this whole channel here that started uh, all the way back on September the 17th. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, right? Tomorrow will be day eight. So we're talking about almost two weeks. If we could clear out this two-week distribution, then I think uh, we're going to go higher. So uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Friday's session. And so I, I started the day with very, very specific notes, right? And we, we talk about this on the video. And I said, look, be very, very patient today, okay? Um, the value today is not obvious. Because remember, uh, we are in a downward cycle. A lot of names have been beaten up. Um, a lot of names are in downtrends. A lot of names are way below supply. So any, any moves to the upside for the general part of the week was stuck, right? You could still get the trades. And we've been talking about, the, you know, we've been talking about individual pivots for the whole week uh, that we did take advantage of the upside. But they, they were short-lived. So we wanted to make sure that and say, look, be patient. Um, still downside bias, but we'll take advantage of upside channels for cash flow only. Again, you can't predict that we're going to completely reclaim the 5, 10-day moving average and say, you know what, forget about the cash flow. Let's, let's start looking for $12 moves. I, again, it's much easier said and done after the fact. But when, you're, uh, when you are uh, faced with a certain day and a certain reality, you have to use common sense. So the day actually turned out to be very, very aggressive. Um, but again, you, you, you can't plan on a five run home run. You, you know, if you're, you know, if you're uh, the, you know, the greatest home run hitter of all time, not named Barry Bonds, well, let's just say you're, you're a Babe Ruth, right? Ba Babe, as he was drinking beer, eating his hot dog right before he's going to the plate, he can't imagine that every single time he's gonna swing, he, he hits it out. Maybe that's the objective, but again, you can't go into the market and say, you know what, I, you know, the market looks like crap now, but you know what, no, I don't care what happens, I, I know for a fact the market's gonna stretch. It doesn't work that way. You always, you're always in the middle of an aggressive day after the fact, and again, you have to kind of adjust on the fly. So um, the day actually turned out to be pretty good uh, beyond continues to be a really big, and again, here, here's if you look at if you look at everything I said, it was literally for cash flow, you know, maybe a dollar, maybe two dollar, use break even on your stock. But again, nobody's going to turn around and say, you know what, Beyond's going to go up ten, Amazon's going to go up a hundred today. Again, we were not in that channel yet, but again, that's unf that's exactly what it, it turned into. So uh, let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Uh, One fifty one needs to build for cash flow. Again, I thought maybe a dollar, maybe two dollars. Um, so here was Beyond, right? This whole channel right here, right? So here was, oops, excuse me. Here was Beyond, right? This whole channel here, right? At 51, and it went nuts. It closed right at the high of the day uh, at 156. I still like Beyond. If you look at the daily chart, and if we do uh, continue to rally, is there a shot we get back to this uh, 161 supply? Absolutely. So I'll definitely be watching uh, Beyond for uh, for Monday. Uh, I traded. I traded t t Tesla. You know, I, I thought pretty well. Um, you know, I said 400 is going to be a tricky area. The previous day had a really aggressive uh, pivot from that 385 into the 400 number. Uh, I said 400 is going to be kind of a tricky area. There's always a possibility, and this is kind of 
kind of a general note for a lot of uh, really big momentum names, you're going to always have uh, the greatest amount of liquidity at whole numbers, okay? Uh, retail is probably gonna be buying at whole numbers. Retail is probably going to be selling at whole numbers. Um, and funds are positioning. Again, what fund is gonna turn around and say, if if Fidelity turns around and say, look, I wanna buy two million shares of, of uh, of Tesla, they're not going to buy it at three hundred and ninety-eight dollars and twenty-eight cents. They're either going to buy it at three ninety-nine, they're going to buy it at four hundred. So you're always faced with a scenario that you're going to have a lot of liquidity, but you're always faced with a scenario that if you're going long, there's a very good chance there's going to be a reload seller there. And the last thing you want to do is fight with a reload seller because you don't know how much inventory he or she has. And that's why you have to you know, really be conscious because they could pull very quickly. So I said, look, there's always a possibility a reload seller at that spot. Uh, if there is, it's going to get rejected really quickly. It needs to rebuild uh, you know, target 407. And that, it, luckily for us, there was just no reload seller there. It just went straight to that. Uh, the first push was to like 404, right? So here's the, here's the channel right here. Let me show you the channel here. So here is the here's where I was talking about the 407 supply, right? So yesterday's high, the previous day's high was that 400. Here was supply and went right to uh, supply at 409. I, I thought it was gonna get to 407, went to 409. So uh, Tesla was good. I still like Tesla. It just needs to uh, take out some more levels. Uh, the video was really, really good towards the end of the day. We actually had um, a short, uh, excuse me, a smaller pivot before this 510 area. So we'll discuss that in a second. Uh, Amazon 37 needs to build. Here is Amazon, right? Here is Amazon, took out the 3070, right? We talked about that level yesterday, right? Here's the whole 3070 level, took out 37, uh, went to 3100. Uh, again, Amazon still looks good for Friday. Um, Square 156 rejected, needs to build 159 macro. And again, this is the greatest part uh, about technical analysis, right? So it takes out the 156. And look where it stops at, at the day, right? It stops at 158.98. And if you look at the daily chart, right? Again, you don't need to be the greatest technician in the world. You know where the pivot is, right? You know where the pivot is. So again, nice move on square. And again, if this thing uh, starts building the 159, 160 level, you, you know, you could get a you know big move here. We saw a lot of uh, 160, 165, 170 call buying uh, for this week. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, I was watching initially Zoom uh, green to red short. Okay. Um, the previous day I caught a nice short on Zoom. Uh, but now with the COVID cases spiking, we started seeing a lot of these uh, COVID names really, really waking up. Uh, so you'll see in a second, we put uh, pivots in Peloton and Zoom. Um, so they started really, really getting aggressively. Obviously, this thing got nowhere near green to red. Uh, Rite Aid got hit pretty hard. Uh, Rite Aid, 1080 if it builds below can flush. Here is Rite Aid, right? So here is Rite Aid. Here is the 1080, right? Here is the 1080, and it flushed all the way down to 968. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught Rite Aid. Uh, DraftKings never got, I still like this level, uh, 5375, uh, 5375, 54 needs to build. I still like this level. If it can wake up uh, at some point throughout the week, it's a nice level here. And as you can see here, it traded to 5359. I still like this 5375, 54 level. If it starts building, uh, maybe it goes to 56. So that area is still valid uh, going forward. And again, you know, take on the way up, right, on uh, Tesla, uh, nice spike. Actually went to 56, but nice spike there. Uh, Ride aid, here comes 10 support, take on the way down. And then we started seeing again, like we talked about a few minutes ago, uh, these, you know, these, you know, these COVID plays, right? They started waking up. Uh, Peloton 94 needs to build. Uh, Peloton exploded, right? It absolutely exploded. So here was, uh, here was the 94 level, right? Here's the 94 level and just went absolutely nuts. Went all the way to 98.48. Uh, that went absolutely bananas. Uh, Zoom went nuts. Uh, 488, 50, 489 needs to build, right? And that's the whole point of pivots, guys. Uh, we had an initial pivot to the downside, okay? That never, you know, that never played out. So we go back to the other side. Again, there is no bias. That's the whole point uh, of trading pivots. There, you know, there is, I don't care which ways they, they, they confirm. As long as they confirm, and as long as we have measure potential that we could identify with supply, then that's the direction we'll be trading. Again, for, you know, for falling in love with these stocks, is, is gonna be incredibly uh, challenging to get rid of emotional baggage. And again, for every trader, we all know, you know the greatest failure is because of emotion. So it's very, very important to kind of concentrate on the setup 
uh, in, in, in an unbiased manner than actually the stock itself. So uh, here is the three, uh, here is the 488 level, right? 488, 489 and exploded, right? Exploded to uh, 498. Um, I like this whole channel here coming up here, folks. Okay, I like this whole channel that's four days in the making. If it could start and create getting above this whole channel here, I think uh, it will go higher. So I wanna keep an eye obviously on Zoom going on this week, uh, 491 on deck. Uh, Netflix obviously never got to uh, the 4, 466 level. Uh, Amazon touched 3000, never built below. Obviously went right back up. Uh, so Peloton highs. Uh, Docu, again, these, again, it's a pretty, as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, on Friday. Again, the stay at home plays, the COVID plays, Docu, 210, 212, big areas. Again, COVID names are going nuts. Here was Docu. Right, so he took out the it took out the two ten, right? Took out the two ten, uh, took out the two twelve, traded to two thirteen. I still like it. I think if it could re reclaim this whole channel here, um, I think it goes higher. And if you look at the macro case, if it just closes above this candle here, uh, you could start looking at really bigger moves. Again, we started seeing October uh, two thirty calls pretty pretty regularly throughout the week. So you know, some another name to watch in case uh, again the COVID spikes. So here was the really big move. Um, so if you guys remember, we talked about. 510 was a big number, and it was. But there was a sneaky pivot of 503 uh, on the video. Big spot, rejected several times, needs to reclaim and build. Again, not every not every channel is the quote-unquote breakout. There are, when you hear me talking about sneaky pivots, this is what we're talking about, a sneaky channel that nobody knows is there, but there's an algorithm there that is tied into an arbitrary, into a very, very specific area that there's a very high probability the volume will come in there. So 503, big spot needs to build. Now, again, remember, keep in mind, 503 and 510 macro, right? 510 macro, like I said, initial supply is 506, right? Initial supply is 510 weeklies coming in, right? So these are all the big numbers, kind of in steps. 503, went to 506, reclaimed 506, 510 weekly buyers coming in. Uh, it reclaimed, right? It reclaimed 510 and NVIDIA uh, went absolutely nuts, right? So you had the 503, to, took out here, took out the 5010, and this is the first close over supply uh, trading over the 515 area. So obviously I love the video again, uh, going in for this week as well to kind of confirm this channel here. So really, really big move uh, there as well. And, and like I said, I, I, I was very surprised. Like I was very pleasantly surprised uh, of the value, okay? And I, I think that's, when you're going into a trading session and you basically turn around and say, Look, I'm not expecting anything, right? You have uh, you have no expectations, you have no letdown, you have no disappointments. Your your mind is clear, and you're willing to trade uh, both sides of the market. Um, and I think that's it. So I, I think going into um, you know going into this week, um, there's a lot of really good setups. Um, let me just give you guys a couple of names uh, that that are non-beta names that that I'm watching. Like look at look at the solar stocks, right? Um, Canadian Solar, I had some news on Friday. That I, I also believe they, there was some October 35 calls. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing looks really good. If it could just confirm this channel here, who knows? Maybe it goes into this uh, 3370s level. Uh, SPWR also in the solar space as well. Pretty basic setup here. Uh, for all you guys who are trading the little bit lower names, if it can just confirm, you know, 109011, you know, maybe it shoots back uh, to $12. That looks good. Uh, check out the Z. Right, um, you know, recent IPO. I think it came public in June. Okay, you can see here every single time it tried to confirm. Right, it tried to confirm this linear regression line. It kept on getting rejected. Right, linear regression line came like it's kind of the same thing now. It, it really needs to reclaim. You know, somewhere around the 40, 20, 40, 50 area. If it could just close uh, over the forty dollar area, I think the stock will go higher. Again, we saw. I think we saw 40, October 40, either October or November 45 calls. Please check. But again, if it could just break this whole downtrend, it could start moving up as well. Uh, obviously, uh, all the beta names are on watch as well. Uh, so for all you guys, have a wonderful, lovely, uh, healthy, happy uh, Sunday. Have an awesome trading session. Again, for all Jewish friends, uh, have an easy fast. Lots of love. And God willing, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great day.